Snap Drunk. As I've stated a million times, I love discovering these relatively unknown original Game Boy games that kinda got lost in the shuffle. Here is Hammer and Harry Ghost Building Company, a side-scrolling beat-em-up that is actually part of a series that started as an arcade game. This was ported to the Famicom in Japan and the NES in Europe, so just like Sagaya, another Japan and Europe only release for the Game Boy. What stands out immediately about Hammer and Harry are the visuals and sound, which are NES quality at the very least. This is a really impressive game just based on that alone. The anime-styled artwork is distinct and builds on a consistent theme. It reminds me of Hamelin No Violin Hickey for Super Famicom, it's that good. The backgrounds look fantastic, allowing each level to look unique. It's safe to say the Game Boy developers by then had mastered how to incorporate an artistic style, and they clearly had fun with it here. And I have to mention the music as well, which is great. However, as a beat-em-up, the most important aspect here is that it should feel satisfying to plow through a bevy of enemies, and the game passes with flying colors on that front. You start with a big cartoonish mallet to hit people, and you can upgrade your weapon to an even bigger, more cartoonish mace. I love this thing. You can also pound the ground to stun all enemies in the area. The game is mostly a beat-em-up, but there's some change of pace levels in here too, like this shoot-em-up level. Pretty simple stuff, but good enough. Again, the goofy art design here is what makes this. There's some somewhat inventive level design and boss fights here too. I can't remember a side-scrolling beat-em-up with an underwater level, for instance. Here you're hanging from ropes and hooks fighting these rotating blades, and then there's this platforming level that's really freaking hard. There's this boss fight where you smack the guy against the wall, it shakes the room, and a bunch of crap falls on you that you have to dodge. For another boss fight, you hit timed bombs back at him, but it's tricky to get the timing right because the bastard keeps moving around. Also, this game is long, surprisingly so, so there's really a lot to experience here. I should also point out that there's a Game Boy sequel as well, Robot Tekoku no Yabo, but it was only released in Japan and it can be kinda tough to find. There's a Super Famicom game in this series as well, Ganbare Daiku no Gensen. It's a port of the original arcade game and it looks freaking great. It's a bit on the easy side though, honestly I liked Hammer and Harry Ghost Building Company for the Game Boy a bit more, and I have a feeling most people would. It's got great visual appeal, a fantastic soundtrack, and quite a bit of variety in the gameplay, with some diverse level design, and hey, it's always satisfying to send an enemy flying off the screen with a giant mallet, can't argue with that. 